Hello and welcome to or welcome back to Lauren's Legends. Today we will be covering a mystery that has been tested with the most modern science, yet still remains unsolved to this day. A frigid lake containing thousands of bones and flesh commonly referred to as Skeleton Lake. But how did thousands of bones end up in this place? And what could these circumstances leading up to it have been? From folklore to a hailstorm to an epidemic, we'll explore the many theories. So sit back and enjoy. This one is one wild mystery. The Himalayans are home to some of the most stunning views there are. Sprawling trails winding through deep forests, emerging at vast tree lines, leading to meadows covered in flowers. A wall of some of the highest peaks in the world, the Himalayan mountain peaks jutting towards the sky to the north, amid this beautiful terrain, at 15,000 feet above sea level, in a very exposed area sits a glacial lake in a bowl of a rock and ice known as Lake Rupkin. In the winter of 1942, a forest ranger was walking along this lakeshore and he stumbled upon an unimaginable sight. His eyes slowly focusing on what he was looking at, he desperately tried to make sense of what he was seeing. Thousands of bones scattered along the floor of the lake. In fact, what he discovered was more than bone. Flesh and hair was also visibly attached to some of the bones. The grisly discovery was made clear when the winter snow and ice melted over the summer. Then even more bodies could be seen through the crystal water. There were said to be as many as 800 skeletons in the depth of the lake. The theories surrounding this mystery are absolutely endless. Local folklore stories involved a pilgrimage in honor of Nandi Devi, a physical manifestation of a supreme Hindu goddess. This is quite possibly the longest and most dangerous pilgrimage in India. Running along a ridge directly above Rupkin lies one of the most treacherous sections, the path of death. As villagers tell it, long ago, Nandi left her home to visit a distant kingdom where she was treated discourteously by the king and queen. Nandi Devi cursed the kingdom, unleashing drought and disaster and infesting the milk and rice with maggots. In order to appease the goddess, the royal couple embarked on a pilgrimage. The king, who liked his entertainment, took a bevy of dancing courtesans and musicians. In violation of the traditions of the pilgrimage, Nandi Devi was furious with a display of earthly pleasures and she shoved the dancing girls down into the underworld. The pits into which they are said to have sunk are still visibly high on a mountainside. Then, according to that legend, she sent down a horrible hailstorm and a blizzard with whirling winds which swept the pilgrims on the path of death into the lake. Their skeletons are a warning to those who would disrespect the goddess. The other theories included a slain army during battle, ritual mass unaliving, and epidemic disease. There was also the question of flesh being present and how old or new these bodies could be. Naturally, anthropologists became fascinated with this mystery and several expeditions were carried out to retrieve remains to study beginning in 1956. However, the scientific analysis of the bones not only disproved these theories, but raised even more questions. The 1956 analysis used radiocarbon dating and estimated the bones to be about 500 years old. These studies also revealed the bones belonged to men, women, and children 
only one weapon was ever found, a single iron spearhead, making the idea of a battle or unaliving very unlikely. Additionally, most of the individuals were healthy and between 18 and 35 years old and showed no sign of disease. The flesh was a product of natural preservation due to the icy cold waters of the lake. Although some of the skulls were cracked, appearing to be the result of blunt force trauma, nature had played a hand in the condition of the bones. This area is prone to landslides, avalanches, and much more, which did effectively damage the bones. As reported by the scientists, further study identified three individuals with unhealed compression fractures. The report hypothesizes that these injuries could have transpired during a violent hailstorm of the type that sometimes occurs in the vicinity of this lake while also recognizing that there are other scenarios very plausible. This meant the story behind the folklore of Nandi Devi could actually have some truth to it. Further backing the theory, some of the artifacts recovered included dozens of leather slippers, pieces of parasols made of bamboo and birch bark and jewelry, specifically bangles made of seashells and glass. Devotees of Nandi Devi are said to carry parasols and wear bangles on the pilgrimage, meaning the dead could have been pilgrims. But in the plot twist of the century, Nature Communications recently published a new study in 2019 after revisiting the site and conducting further testing from 39 of the skeletons. This research was conducted by 16 research institutions across three continents. Genetic analysis and new carbon dating revealed that a significant proportion of the Rukun remains belong to people from somewhere in the Eastern Mediterranean, most likely near Crete. And they had perished at the lake only a couple of centuries ago. But wait, the story gets weirder. Researchers believe the bones are from two completely separate time periods, with one group living around 800 AD and the second group found at the same time in the same area, dating all the way back to 800 AD, making them a thousand years older. Adding to the mystery, the older group of bones matches the DNA of people from South Asia. Two groups of ethnically different people living a thousand years and a continent apart found dead in the same lake. The scientists who recently published their unusual findings in the magazine Nature have not managed to determine the reasons why a group of people came from modern day Greece to visit an area located at such a high altitude. While the area is accessible and widely visited today, the people who belong to these bones were separated from civilization by a five day trek through treacherous terrain and harsh winter conditions. They have also not been able to come up with a hypothesis to explain the reasons why they all died in such close proximity to each other or why their bodies were placed so near to each other. The modern science and DNA testing that has been used to attempt to solve this mystery has ironically made everything the more confusing. A group of people from the Mediterranean traveled to the Himalayas, suddenly went missing, remained undiscovered for a couple hundred years without rhyme or reason, no records, reports, or sightings have ever existed and no explanation has ever fit the evidence. Skeleton Lake is even more of a mystery now than it has ever been. So what do you think happened? Please let me know in the comment section down below because I am lost on this one. This is so weird. When you think about it, two different time periods, a thousand years apart, 
what was drawing people to this area in the remote nothingness of this 15,000 high elevation mountainside lake? Baffling. I don't know. You tell me. So if you are actually still watching at this time, you're my people. I appreciate you. Thank you. I did want to let you know, and I'm going to put a separate video out about this just to make sure I try to touch base with everybody, but I am splitting my channel. So Lauren's Legends will now only be Urban Legends, Unsolved, Weird Mystery, and I'm going to keep some survival stories because I know that a lot of y'all like that. If there is something else that you would like to add under this kind of area of videos I'm putting out, please let me know. You can message me. I do have my email attached to all of my descriptions, but I'm starting a completely separate channel called Who Killed Who? And it is all and only everything true crime. So if you are interested in that kind of topic, please go check me out. And you can also see if you scroll down on my page, I attach both YouTube channels at the bottom of them if it's easier for you to click. Again, thank you as always for sticking around and watching this. Please let me know what story you would like to hear next and I will see you next time.